This is part two of making an LED display with the toy that shall not be named. When I saw the fidget and wanted to do an electronics project with it, the only thing I was thinking was, wow, that can be pretty cool. The thing I didn't realize was how divisive it was gonna be. Apparently there's a massive hatred towards fidgets. Maybe it's because they've become too popular. Or maybe it's because I didn't hold my mouth right whenever I was trying to promote it. But I still cling to the hope that some of you see the educational value somewhere in all this. So let's jump back in where we left off. If you want more information on this project, including written steps, project files, and code, you can head over to the project page at hackster.io. And no, it's not a coincidence that that's the exact same name that's written on my shirt. I'm proud to say that Hackster.io is a sponsor of this video, and if you like this project and would like to see more projects like it, please feel free to head over to their website for more. What we have at this point is a working POV circuit board that whenever you spin it, it spells stuff. And we also have a microcontroller that we can program to make it say whatever we want. So the next big step would be to figure out how to fit all this inside of Fidget. So maybe the first step should be figuring out what the fidget is gonna be made out of. I would suggest just using your creativity, your skills as a maker, and whatever material you have available. For me, that ended up being 3D printing. Surprise, surprise. I started by taking measurements of all the parts so that I could figure out the minimum size that I could make this thing. Then instead of designing a fidget from scratch, I headed over to Thingiverse.com and downloaded one that I could use as a template. Then I headed over to Tinkercad.com, which is a great name if I do say so myself, and uploaded the fidget so that I could then edit it. Using the measurements that I took and a little bit of trial and error, I was able to come up with a nice little 3D print that could house all my electronics. You can download my finalized 3D files at the project page below. To make connecting wires easier, I decided to leave most of it on the perf board and just cut around it. Wow, cutting perf board is not as easy as you'd think. With everything cut to size and making sure it all fit, it was then time to add the wires. I left notches in the design so you could run wires from one pod to another, and I just used some shrink tubing to cover the wires. And then once the positions were finalized, I used hot glue to hold them into place. Then you just need to add a bearing to the middle, and you can find the bearings I used on the project page, and then insert the finger pads. Now it's time to give it a test. As you can see, using the same settings that we had last week, it works out pretty well. But one of the questions I got in last week's video was how can you time the display to how fast you're spinning it? Well, in short, there's no foolproof way to do that, but you can tweak the code by adjusting this variable. This is basically the speed in which the letters are displayed. And you can go to a higher number for displaying them slower or a lower number for displaying them faster. This other variable is for the spacing of the letters, so you can adjust that as well along with the speed and then just go with what works for you. And I've posted my code to GitHub so that you can streamline it or adjust it as needed. Just like Rocket3989 did by taking my code and making it a lot simpler and a lot easier to use. What ideas would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this and if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please consider liking, subscribing, following me on social media, or donating at tinkernut.com slash donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com or hackster.io.